Hey, Curious here. And you know, I tried to talk about antinatalism. Did I say that right? Antinatalism? Well, anyway. Because, as I guess I can only classify myself as an armchair futurist. But, since I was very young, I do think a lot about social models. How they fit together. How possible futures could fit together. And I look at a lot of examples of how people saw the future in the past. As well as modern and and vintage science fiction in literature, movies, art, even science speculation of the past. And when I look at these things and see the actual future of how it turned out, I have to ask myself, well, how does antinatalism fit into that? Because every scenario just about tells you, as well as a lot of environmental things, uh, people, conversations, that the planet is overpopulated. I can remember in junior high school uh, seeing the movie Future Shock. And that, and later with, in high school with seeing A Clockwork Orange... That profoundly affected my views. And then the 80s stuff like Mad Max and things of that nature. A Boy and His Dog, if you've ever seen that one. I didn't get the political message at the time, but I do a lot more now. Logan's Run. Although I realized the books were much different later when I had Wikipedia and other things to look. And then, of course, there was what exactly are the Soviets? What's communism? And why, even watching some Russian science fiction, like, and happening to cross, excuse me, happened to cross various articles and news information about these movies and what they portrayed. I can't think of any off the top of my head, but... Oh, maybe an example would be... Well, no, I was going to say Queen of Blood, but... Uh, that was originally taken from another Russian movie. Um, from a Russian movie, and I don't exactly remember the um, title of it. It was all in Russian, anyway. Well, anyway, the point is, real quickly, is that... When I think of antinatalism, I think of a model of society. Both how it could be utopian or dystopian. Or, or like real life is somewhere in between. And the way it always seems to be. Although what people might think of the past of our modern world, well, makes you wonder. So, what do I think about that? Well, for one, I agree. Um, matter of fact, it's one of my core beliefs, another one of my core beliefs, that I think that the population should be reduced. But how do you do that fairly? Well, I would say you do it by birth control. But I come to realize that I don't exactly like the volunteer model. Not because I want a fascist viewpoint or implementation to take control of population control method, but because it might be counterintuitive to the people who actually want this development in the first place. If the people who are self-disciplined enough to choose not to have children all do this, then the people who aren't will quickly replace them. Now, uh, this gets into 
epigenetics and um, other things of that nature. Eugenics. And eugenics is a very bad idea. But so is overpopulating the global population that's putting a stress on the ecosphere. So I really wonder what is the solution in that sense. Especially with the reality that our mechanized society runs on fossil fuels. And if you've ever read The Long Emergency, then you realize that with the bell curve of depleting energy resources, there's going to be a lot of problems in the future. Although there will be solutions in various ways where it will balance it out somewhat, but that means somebody somewhere is going to lose. Whether it's the guy that has to ride 20 miles on the freeway and doesn't make it home one night because he falls asleep behind the wheel, or because it gets too rainy, or he just has a heart attack from all the stress of traffic, an endless traffic jam, and high gas prices, or the people who are being displaced out of any kind of social safety net that's important for reintegrating the poor and the dispossessed into a place society where they can reacclimate into society and gain wealth once again without it being enabled by a welfare state specifically, which is a rough contradiction of itself. So, what do I think you do? One solution I might have, and feel free to pick it apart, but I think the honest solution is you create something of a welfare state again. However, you tie it in with drug policies that and programs that help with mental issues and help with health issues as well as rehabilitation in that sense. So you go ahead and you... Now this is where it gets kind of hard to explain because there's subtle nuances to this and I really want to get it right. What you do, either by incentive or by restriction, is... Any mother who receives aid from, from human assistance will either by benefit or by requirement, and I, and I honestly don't know which would be better, would have to have any of their male children to have a bisectomy. That means that would stop the syndrome of poor, low-income individuals having to be a victim of child support because anyone who can get child support or can pay child support doesn't get embroiled in the system of disenfranchising the poor Yeah, that's it. Basically, it's just enfranchising the poor. If you have the money and you're not paying it, you're willingly not paying it if you have the means. So, and this also would increase... Now, I don't... I'm going to stop there because I don't know if this is an aspect of biodiversity. Not biodiversity, but social biology that might not be scientifically truthful or accurate. Maybe it's just something I believe. But I think if you have it where middle class or rich men father children from poor women 
or low income women, excuse me, then you have a natural redistribution of wealth that matches population. And you also maybe have a genetic cross migration that might inbreed various traits that either the rich or the poor, the poor or the rich need. Maybe people are poor because they're stuck in an economic niche. Maybe our artificial mechanical society run by fossil fuels has created these economic niches where various things like race, intelligence, whatnot, have put these people in class case, invisible classes, class cases, and this would create a situation where genetic diversity would spread, and through a form of natural subsidy, the poor would be able to go ahead and escape the cycle of poverty. Now, I, whether this is genetic or not, I don't really know. I'm tempted to s believe in social biology a little bit. Because if animals have instincts, why all of a sudden don't we have instincts? And although we're all one species, if different subspecies of animals that even that can freely crossbreed even have different traits then why wouldn't human have different traits i don't know so it's almost like we can't self judge ourselves because it's almost a social equivalent of the heisenberg uncertainty principle every time a social biologist or a social anthropologist looks at himself, it creates an effect that changes the way other things view, or society in ten instead views itself. <sighs> so, maybe the ultra-rich, who are kind of inbred, need the poverty stricken which are kind of feral and that would be a form of antinatalism because the natural friction and resistance would create fewer offspring and yet solve the problem of who gets to have children and who doesn't it would happen by the rich wanting to stay rich and the poor well being one half of the prodigy of the poor being not available to input in the gene pool I think that makes sense now of course genetically it might not there might be something to do with chromosomes where male offspring present into the gene pool a certain trait or set of traits that are needed all across the board. Can't rule that out either. But I don't know if you can play hard science with things like with subjective sciences like anthropology, sociology, and general culture. So this is what I'm thinking. And I'm sure a lot of people have their own opinions about this, some more informed than others. So I don't know how informed this, this idea is. But personally, I think it would be a good form of antinatalism. 
And since it won't affect the non-mechanized societies, it could stop them from being so enabled by industrialized nations. And that might further increase genetic diversity in the world while reducing population fairly and in a non-fascist way. If you consider what I say, non-fascist. Anyway, I wanted to cut it quick because my videos have been going way too long. And I know when I start studying over my words, that's time to end it. So, this is Republicus, Curious, Tim, whatever. She's a guy who likes to think. Over and out.